This is Whitney, and you're listening to the Jcast on Jabberlog. Welcome to Within the Trenches, true stories from the 911 dispatchers who live them. Hey, what's going on? This is Ricardo with Jevrolog on the Jcast, and I'm sitting here with my co-host Whitney, and this is episode number six Thanks of Within the Trenches. For in. Yeah. So, how's everything been going? Good, Ricardo. I kind of have a confession to make here. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I hate to say it, but back in episode one, right in the beginning mm-hmm. of my interview, I made the incorrect statement that Grand Valley was a D1 school. It is not. It is not. Oh, it is snap. not. It is a D2 school. It's my alma mater. I'm very embarrassed to say that I got this incorrect. There was only one person that noticed it, and it was my own father. He's, oh. he's pretty involved over at Grand Valley, and he just kind of said, really? You got that wrong? And I said, well, you know what, Dad? I realized about three minutes after I said it that I, that I had said it incorrectly, but Ricardo was in the middle of telling a story about how he stole his car. <laughs> my dad was like, hmm? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, I was going to let it go. Nobody else had said anything. Until last night mm-hmm. when our two dear coworkers, Eric and Chad, had to call up here and harass me about it. So so messed up. So I'd like to apologize to everybody for that, especially my sweet alma mater. But what can you do? Right? It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a uh, it's been a busy week or so. Uh, we've been uh, we've been in the news. The Holland Sentinel brought out an article and uh, Angela Cunningham of WZZM was here doing a story with us. So uh, the show has really been blowing up. And this week's episode, we are sitting with two of Ottawa County's finest. And we have Jen and Crystal. How's it going? Good. How Good. are you? Oh, uh, a little tired. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I'm sure you guys are as well because we are uh, you guys were working, what was it, seven to seven? Yes. Oh, man. Yeah, so Ricardo and I worked 12 hours last night. We worked from 5P to 5A, and Jen and Crystal just came up here now, and they had worked 7P to 7A, and it's about 8.30 right now on Friday morning, so we're all kind of dragging. They both got about a 97-ounce coffee in front of them, <laughs> so if one of them starts clicking or something like that later doing a bonics, then that's Yeah, that's, that's why it, it's on. about the coffee, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all of us, you know, all the uh, dispatchers listening that are night shifters we all know what this is about and that we can stay awake as long as we have to if need be of course but uh you know this episode is really about uh about your guys' story so um jen how did you get into uh dispatching how did it all start what brought you to this um well i actually kind of fell into it Mm -hmm. um i did daycare for 10 years Mm -hmm. prior to this and um i finished my associate's degree at mcc and just started looking around a little bit mcc is at muskegon community college And nice. then um, I lived in Holland, south side of Holland. Mm-hmm. And um, it just, you know, I saw the, the ad in the paper and I thought, well, you know, I'll go ahead and put in my application. And um, I got a call for the testing uh-huh. and went and did the testing. And after the testing, I thought, oh, my gosh, that's too bad because I did really bad. And then they <laughs> called me for the interview and I came for the interview and they said, um, you know, I did the interview on the way home. I thought, oh, that's too bad because I feel like I did really bad. <laughs> and then they called and offered me the job. Oh, that's great. Um, so, yeah. So I it just kind of fell into it. And, I, you know, I walked into dispatch. I walked into the environment really not knowing a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I was basically familiar with the Holland Police Department. And that was that. Outside of that, I knew absolutely nothing. Not, not really anything about our county even. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, I was pretty local to Holland City and the mm-hmm. north side of Holland. So, um I knew almost nothing coming in. Wow. What was the testing like? Um, the testing was, uh, I, we, it was like classroom testing, and mm-hmm. we did some, you know, we did some work, mapping where you have to kind of decide the priority of where you're going to send things to. Ah. We did some listening to calls where you listen, and right. um, then you have to retain that information and give that information mm-hmm. back and be able to keep numbers straight and, and type quickly enough and mm-hmm. um, just kind of your reaction time. Wow, that's a lot different from the testing that I did. When I did my testing here, um, all I had was a written, actually, and it was Wasn't just... Wasn't that like 1981, though? Yeah, something like that when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Man. 
I was trying to age you a little bit, but I think whatever D one athletics. Oh no! <laughs> but <It> started. <laughs> yeah, so the testing is completely, uh, you know, different. Um, yeah, all I had was a uh, written, and when I took that, I thought, you know, the same thing like you were thinking. Man, I jacked that up. I'm not going to make it. But yeah, I was in I was in the same boat with you. So then, um, how long have you been doing this now? Been doing it uh, four and a half years. Four and a half years. Yep. Which is interesting because you can, you know, somebody does a job for four and a half years and usually after about two years in a job, you're really, I don't want to say really good at your job, but really strong, really comfortable. But in dispatch, you have people that have been dispatching for 25 years and they'll still gladly say, I learned something new today. Absolutely. I had no idea. I hear it all the time. Yeah. So. I heard it all the time in training too. Right. And I think that, I think, yeah, it was a year, it, we, back then it was about a year of training for us. Okay. That's mm-hmm. definitely shortened up now. Um, but once um once i got through i actually went i was hired as part time and so then i was offered a um, full time job with the state and i actually went casual at ottawa county okay. and worked full time for the state monday through friday mm-hmm. um 8 to 5 and, you know Man. every holiday off and nice so, yeah and oh, <laughs> i think i got goosebumps when I, I know that. that's wow you did. <laughs> did you see that wow that's yeah but you know what nothing can compare to it's like once it gets in your in your bloodstream or something dispatch right. once it gets in there it's all you you know it's what you want to do and i felt like i hadn't finished what i started out mm-hmm. there you know because you're just not comfortable yet so as soon as a right. full time position opened up which was just about 3 months okay i came back full time and, um, you know, working every night, working holidays, I still, I love what I do. So, yeah. And it's nice because, you know, I know us here in Allegan and you up in Ottawa, we work 12. So we do get a chunk of time yes. off mm-hmm. as well. It's not like we're just stuck with Saturday, Sunday. We get that little, sometimes we get that big stretch in there, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Crystal, what about you? Let's first talk how long you've been doing this for. Two and a half years. Two and a half years. How'd you get started? Um, somewhat fell into it as well. I um, have my bachelor's in criminal justice from Grand Valley. The D1 school? The D1 school, (laughs) yes, that one. Um, (laughs) So I was interested in law enforcement, criminal justice type things to begin with. Mm -hmm. Um, I had applied throughout the county in various different positions and and that sort of thing, and nothing was really panning out as far as getting a job. Um, And again, I just saw this one listed and decided to apply and thought it kind of fit what I had been kind of looking for in a way. Did you start out as part-time as well, or was it a full-time position? position that was posted and at the time well training is full-time okay but the position Mm -hmm. itself is part-time is that how it is everyone starts in ottawa county or does it just depend on what your needs are at the time i think everybody kind of starts part-time interesting yeah yeah Yeah. um and i was filling in somewhat on a full-time basis depending on you know who was gone and, Mm -hmm. and the needs that needed to be filled on the floor um and then shortly after that i been offered full-time. So I've been full-time for just over a year now. Okay. So it's nice. Okay. I have a burning question I have to ask you guys right in the beginning. (laughs) And I've said this 1000 times in our dispatch center. And I said, I got to ask them at some point. So what a perfect time. Why do you guys never use your names when you call us? We always laugh because we get a call from you guys. You say, Hey, it's Ottawa. And I always say, Hey, you. I know. I never know. I never know who to say. Like when we spoke, you're like, hey, it, hi. I was like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's Crystal. I was like, oh, hey, that's hi. We're never sure how many people are yeah. working in your center, so we're you like, yeah, what? I just talked to one of you. I never uh, thought of it before, but we don't. No, we don't. Yeah. It's our name. I get that you don't. You know, sometimes people are like, I'm not comfortable using it with my name with a caller, which I mm-hmm. understand that. But sometimes, you know, when I'm calling or I get a call back from you guys, I'm like, hey, oh, I don't. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea who I talked to up there. Um, she was nice. Yeah. She said hello. Yeah, I think very she said pleasant. hello twice. Mm-hmm. Um, very easy to understand. That, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> we'll say somebody over over at Lean is like, who did you talk to over there at Ottawa? I talked to Ottawa. Uh, Ottawa. They said, oh. hey, this is Ottawa. So I said, hey, this is um, Allegan? Whitney? Yeah. No. You know, AMR does the same thing. When we call over there, they'll just say, AMR. I'm like, oh. Yeah, you know, sometimes they'll say their first names or they'll just say, hi, Elegant. I'm That's like, the worst one. You're like, say, a creeper. Yeah, they, they say, hi, Elegant. And I always say, the same thing. hey, hi, this Ottawa. is Whitney with, with Elegant. Yeah. Um, uh, you took away my thunder. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. But, okay, so that's not a policy or anything like that. No. No, no it's it just, didn't ever dawn on me. 
that well, we do that. look along the horizon now. <laughs> now I will Let start. it dawn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start uh, saying my name all the time. Yeah. Oh, that's start so funny. Start saying Crystal's name, John. I'm going you to. can start saying, hey, this is Crystal. Yeah. And then and then we'll do the same yeah. on the other end. But when I call up there, I'm going to say, hey, this is Crystal <laughs> from Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> see what see what happens. Right. I think that would be Sorry, a lot a lot of fun. Entertaining. It would be. That would be good. We'll just make sure to forward all our calls up to you guys. Right. Yeah. You can take everything from well, that one. Well, right. we don't have the, with the, our special switch that we have to turn everything over. It actually goes to Barry, Down but here. maybe we can reroute it somehow. I think they'd be okay with it. I don't think anybody's heart would be broken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, when you guys were uh, when you when you were doing your training. Um, did you have someone shadowing you or how did it exactly work? I mean, did like here, um, we have our people, they, they start out in the uh, training coordinator's office and there's, you know, different computers and stuff to learn the CAD system and, and everything else. And then they go and they sit and watch a few phone calls and then off to the lions. <laughs> um, our training, when I went through it, our training system was, um, we did like a, a month of classroom training uh-huh. and then we went in and, um, you know, which really encompassed, like, we did ride-alongs. We went out um, and did some tours, you know. Like, geo-rides, yeah. looking at mm-hmm. landmarks and, and stuff. Then we did, you know, medical training. And then we did, we started with non-emergency calls, mm-hmm. then 911 calls. And then we moved into, like, the different dispatch, city dispatch, county dispatch, fire. Cool. Um, so our training program is... Um, being revamped a little bit yeah and it's crystal was even in a different training program than i was really oh gotcha and now we're you know now we're changing it again so had you guys trained with anybody else or was it just a single person one-on-one training with a training coordinator i don't know exactly how it was for jenny when i did it we switched trainers about every four weeks Okay, ah, so, so it's kind of so how we do it here then. Yeah, we had a rotation and just kind of went around, like she said, to the different desks. I don't know. Did you have as yes. many different trainers? Okay. Yep. Not as many as you did. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. What would you do? <laughs> I was probably bad. Were you, f- were you fist fighting again? <laughs> just yeah. kidding. Right in this match. <laughs> you don't tell me what to do. I, I just like to put it out there right now that she did throw a pen at me. Again? <laughs> oh, it's all she out does now. Violence, so just be careful. Yeah, so yeah. careful. Everybody who says, "Well, you know, do you think I have it to be a dispatcher?" I'd probably wear a face shield or you know, mouth guard. At <laughs> right. Least. You've heard it here first. Yeah. I'm just trying to get <laughs> into the into the profession. <laughs> wear a mask <laughs> or bring a shield. Um, so, your first, uh, let's say, you know, think back when you were in training. That first nine on one call. Was it nerve wracking? Like, did it? Were you kind of sweating, or were you just like, "No, nope, this is what I got to do," um, and you were all about it? I was driving. We were in Grand Haven then when I first started, mm-hmm. and I remember driving from Holland to Grand Haven, and I would be in the car going, "Did you just shoot up thirty one that way?" Yeah, and I would say the whole way, "I don't want nine one one." I'd pretend like I was answering the phone the whole time in the car. That's awesome. And I'd be like imagining scenarios in my head and I'd be out loud going, That's where is awesome your emergency? Though. What is your address and your telephone number? And <laughs> if it's convenient, may I please have your nearest crossroad? Can you repeat that for verification, please? Exactly. <laughs> On my screen, I'm showing this is your telephone number. Can you repeat it back for me? <laughs> so, and then also with license weights and things like that, mm-hmm. you yeah. would do, you know, you would your, practice your, your phonetic alphabet. Alphabet right, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Trying to say it back to each other. Yeah. Then you got the officers that are saying, be Boston. Yeah. They're the be Boston. Be Baker. Mm-hmm. Ah, ooh, sorry, Central. Yeah. We had B-boy. that last night. Uh, it's going to be Baker Char. Uh, I mean, uh, boy. Yeah. He that, always says Baker. And I think somebody had mentioned it to him. Like, hey, we, I don't know if you learned that in the academy, but we use boy, you know, here. And yeah. You noticed that last night? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. It was funny. Um, what about you, Crystal? When you took that first 911 call, what, did you feel like you wanted to throw up? Or were you, were you just like, I'm going to take this. I got this under control. No, I think I was nervous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Training was educational, okay, to say the least. But it was also overwhelming at times. Absolutely. So I think when it actually got to, to be me doing the actual job, mm-hmm. it was like, whoa, what did I get myself into here? Can you remember one of your first 911 calls that's real significant in your mind? It doesn't have to be the you know the, the worst one or the most interesting one you've ever taken, but do you remember one of the first couple ones where you were like, oh, this is a real 911 emergency? Because um, we, we all know that, you know, not every call that comes in on 911 is an emergency, is it? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Jenny and I were talking about things on the way here uh-huh. and kind of working over a few ideas, and um, I was telling her one of the the ones that's memorable 
early on, I had taken a call for a medical. Okay. Um, a man had called and said that his mother-in-law was having a stroke, I believe it was. And I was going through EMD, like I was supposed Atta to. Got a girl. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> For those listening that don't know, EMD stands for Emergency Medical Dispatch. It's mm-hmm. a protocol that most counties, you know, when they pick it up, their medical control has gone over it. Their attorneys have looked at it or whatnot. So it's a safety net for us. If we follow this EMD protocol, we kind of get saved a little bit if anything goes real, real wrong. Keep right. going. So I was going through the questions with him. Um and he was saying to me, this is this is ridiculous. I don't know why you're asking these questions. She needs help right now. Would you send them now? I'm not going to mm-hmm. answer any of your questions. And in the meantime, I had already hit enter in CAD. Oh, it was being yeah. dispatched across the room by my coworkers. Mm-hmm. And I tried to tell him that, and he just you know didn't understand what was going on. And eventually, I think he ended up hanging up on me in, really? the, in the oh, middle man. of all the questions. But he didn't even have any concept of what was going on no. in the room and or the fact that I wasn't the only one and my partners were sending help. Right. You're this fresh fresh dispatcher. That was kind of tough to say. (laughs) And you're thinking, I'm just trying to help you. Yes. Want to yell into the phone there? Yeah. Yeah. I remember um, a significant one of my first calls. Mm -hmm. Um, It was um, called in by a third party caller, Mm -hmm. suicidal. So we, you know, we called back. Absolutely. Yeah. Called the person and I (laughs) called and I said, first of all, I gave my name. Okay, which, yep. you know, we don't do there at Ottawa. Yeah, so. I know, right? <laughs> Liar. Look, Jen's first lie of the day. Yeah. <laughs> this is Jenny from 119. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, oh, you oh, really said that? I said it. Oh, I thought you were no. joking. <laughs> Oh, I was man. so worked up. It was my first one. <laughs> one one nine. Yeah, we're we're kind of like the sister station to nine one one. Can you hold on a minute? Can you rewind? Can you call right back really quick? I uh, I got it down this time. <laughs> my trainer was probably like, oh, oh man. I mean, yeah, I really messed up. I mean, with that phone system, I called. You know, one time I answered the phone and it went on the intercom all over the the Grand Haven <laughs> Department of Public Safety, and there I am going Ottawa nine one one. Out of a nine one one, it's my trainer <laughs> trying to get across the room, in the car. hitting the yeah, yeah. <laughs> just as I had practice, trying to hit the. She's going, no, no, stop! Oh, <laughs> so. That's it. We were talking about open mics on one of the other episodes, and I had told Ricardo, I said, the next time it comes up, I got to bring it up. We had I when I wear a headset, you can plug it into two different spots mm-hmm. in our consoles, and there's one spot. Uh, which I didn't know, but if you plug it in, it's an open mic. Well, I was on Fire East, so the entire east side of our county, all the fire departments in those 12 townships, I had an open mic. Well, I was talking to somebody that was going to pick up a a deer that had been hit. They were going to pick it up and process it, and I had just plugged in my headset, and I put my headset on, and I called them and said, hey, I have a deer available, kind of went through it, and I paused for a second, and I, I was trying to tell them, He said, you know, is it a little one? Is it worth picking up? And I said, no, it's huge. And then all of a sudden, (laughs) Wayland Fire Chief, one of the townships over there, he called and he said, hey, Whitney's got an open mic. Everybody can hear. <laughs> I think, did he call you? Was it you? I don't remember. I, don't, I remember the incident. Yeah, somebody looked at it. was great. I think it was Carl, one of our other dispatchers. I yeah. think that's who it was. And he's like, hey, hey, hey. Wayland said you got an open mic. And I looked, and sure enough, it was just bright red. I was mm-hmm. keyed up on it. And so I get that feeling, yeah, to be like just yelling, talking to everybody all over your building. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. my One of my uh, first calls that I took, actually my very first one, I'm sitting there, and I'm waiting. My trainer says, okay, the next one's yours. I'm like, really? Yeah, it's yours. Okay. So I'm sitting there. And I've always described for myself, taking a 911 call, like getting in the car, slamming the gas, and just letting go of the steering wheel because it can be intense. Mm -hmm. So the call comes in. I see the red light pop up, incoming call. I said, that's mine? They're like, yeah, that's yours. (laughs) I'm like, "Ah, okay. So I pick it up, and I get 911 or emergency, and it's just screaming and screaming. I was like, oh, man, this is nuts. And the, the, we had an older CAD system. I don't know if you guys are using the AS400 still um, or which one you guys are using. The No. Well, I was told differently than <laughs> a while ago that you guys were using that. Anyway, it was uh, it's an older an older CAD system. But I was still I, – I got flustered, and I, I mixed up the, the CAD. So all these windows were popping up. <laughs> and I look over at my trainer. Bing, I was like, bing, I can't bing, do this. Bing, bing, I can't bing. do this. <laughs> I said, I need you to break into this. She's like, no, you got it. You got it. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> and I 
I ended up getting it fine, and you know, I, I finished the call. But yeah, nerve wracking. Oh, geez, it's all sweating and everything else. Mm-hmm. Like, you need to take a break. I'm like, no, because I'm never going to learn. I'm never going to get this if I don't keep going. <laughs> no, if I take a break, I'm going to get in my car and peel out of here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I will be back. out of here. Um, so I'm I'm curious because uh, I know we've done it many times ourselves. But is there ever a time that you guys have taken a call that it turns out that it's on Allegan's side? And you're thinking, ooh, yeah, it's oh, on yeah. the other side. <laughs> you transfer it and you say, sorry, suckers. <laughs> and you go back to playing free cell. Transfer yeah. it and say, this is Ottawa. Yeah. yeah. Is that yeah. what the transfer? We know. What? Yeah. What? yeah. Who is Not this in Ottawa? Ottawa? Who in Ottawa is it? <laughs> it? That's At least you guys say that you're from Ottawa. There's some other neighboring counties that I will not say right now that – um, the, they don't say anything. I mean, all you hear is the click, and someone's like, "Oh, ah!" Yeah. Like, I just oh, told you my what's address. What's going on? Like, I just got transferred from who? And then they'll say, which I won't say. But yeah, there, there's never, you know, they don't say who they are. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I'll continue now. <laughs> but yeah, there have been times where, especially in the summer, where we'll get boating calls or something, and oh, they'll say, yeah. "We're over by the Highland Pier." Up, oh, all right. <laughs> like, Hold on a minute. This is how they go with the transfer. What? Yeah. Wait. For our <laughs> listeners, the Highland Pier is very much right on the edge, but it's all just into Ottawa. So if you have somebody that says, oh, there's just a boat that just crashed into the wall at the channel or whatever. Hold on. I'm going to transfer you up to Ottawa. Just a second. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's always good. Did you get that boat into the wall with about 15 patients in the water? <laughs> no? Okay. You're going to get about 6,000 calls in a minute. Good luck. <laughs> no, that, that's good though that, you know. I've always wondered that because that's how we feel sometimes. So if you guys do the same thing, I'm sure other uh, dispatchers that are going to be listening to this will think, yeah, we do the exact same thing. As soon as a call comes in and it goes to a different county, yes. <laughs> exactly. Especially if it's a suicidal or whatever, and you start getting the information and the third-party caller is looking for an address or whatnot, and you're typing it all in there and your partner's getting ready to tone it out over the radio or whatnot, and you transfer it over and you just want to type in there, you're welcome, so that the person on the radio sees it. <laughs> Yes, and we we are joking about this, but they are serious calls. It's just we have so many calls that are coming in at the time as well. It's a little bit of a relief for us to be able to pass mm-hmm. it to the right there, county. It's usually <laughs> the because right right. it's a very time-consuming call. It's that we don't love our. It's not that we don't love our jobs or that we can't handle the calls. It's just that some of these things. It's incredible. I mean, you have to get for a boating accident. You have to get multiple ambulances you have to get the coast guard and route it's just a lot a lot of work so if you know we're busy doing other stuff on our end yeah we got enough going on in our county <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so um how do your uh you guys work on the same team or how do your teams work Cause i think i saw a schedule once where it looked like you had like five or six different teams or something or maybe even more than that we have four main crews four main crews yep and it's same with the county uh, our county officers. Do you go that, that same rotation Same rotation, with them? yep. So That's we're always nice. working with the same officers and same people on the street. So it's nice to to be able to have a working relationship with them where right. you know them well enough to to exchange information. And, How they like help it. help each other out. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah. yeah. Some of them want everything and some of them only want the bare minimum. Yep. How many people do you have working minimum at a time in your center? Usually it's four. Four minimum? Okay, your supervisor, supervisor, are they on the line? Are they taking phone calls or are they supervising? Usually, are, they, you know, are they walking around? or Usually supervising, but if there's overflow or if the phone's ringing, they'll pick it up usually. So they're really good at helping us out. That's cool. nice. Yeah. Yeah, that is always good because like, us here, I'm one of the supervisors and we work on the line all the time. Um, I have four hours of offline time that is set aside for other things, but... Not everybody does it, so yeah, it's good to know, um, you know, how you guys do things. Because uh, myself and another supervisor were going to go and actually sit on a, a night shift uh, with you guys to see how uh, how you guys do things, um, how your supervisors work. And actually, for a while there, we were looking at a completely new schedule. So we we're trying to figure out, you know, what kind mm-hmm. of schedules do you guys go on? We have um, our four main crews are seven to seven, and then we have on each. On each, like on each of the half of the month, each mm-hmm. side, I guess you would say, mm-hmm. um, we have a one to one and an eleven to eleven. I got it. Those floaters that yep. kind of go in there and pick up, yep. we're like overflow. Like we have minimum three people staffing in here, but then um, you know there's a a blip in the night there, and then on weekends that we have to have at least four in here. 
And we're finally getting our staffing levels up high enough. Sometimes there's five people in here, but... Yeah, even that's that nice. sometimes. Is. Yeah, sometimes, especially with big events and stuff. What kind of what kind of big events do you guys have up there? Is, I know, you know, Grand Haven will have a lot of stuff. Grand Haven has Coast Guard. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Holland has Tulip Time in May. Um, if you ain't Dutch, you ain't much. <laughs> <laughs> you guys um, have the officers on all the segways, which look really cool, man. Right. Yeah. Utilize some of that extra resources. <laughs> um, the other one that's big in Marne is the Berlin Fair. All up um, the raceway up there? Yep, yeah, and they bring the speedway extra reserves out and stuff for that. And we don't do, I don't think, a whole lot of extra staffing for that, but I know they do for the road cars. And they have some of the reserves come out. Um, i trying to think if there's anything other it's, than that. I just ask because, you know, when people think of the counties on the lake, or like in West Michigan, they usually just think of the lakeshore stuff. So people right. think of Grand Haven and Holland. Here they think of, you know, Saugatuck and South Haven. Yep. But there's, you know, a whole lot more that goes on in the county, too. So I just, I wasn't sure. I had yeah. forgotten about Berlin up there. Yep. It's usually in the middle of the summer when it's really, really hot. And it gets really, really rowdy, I bet. Yeah. It can be. I'm sure alcohol's not involved, though, with <laughs> not at all. racing cars. No, not Maybe. at all. Mm-mm. No. Um, how do you guys work your uh, – do you guys do, like, forced overtime? Like, is, Do you guys ever do any forced no. – Man. Are you kidding me? We're going to have no. to go up to Ottawa. Yeah. It's all it's – all, um, it's usually all done by, you know, they'll put Volunteer. up – Yeah, they'll put up um, sheets that will say we need these overtime slots filled and then um, – What if someone calls yeah. in, Yeah. If somebody calls in, they'll call us. They'll they'll go down the list. What mm-hmm. if nobody covers that? Um, it usually doesn't happen. Sometimes a supervisor will come and cover it. <laughs> <sighs> this is why we need cameras in here. I know. Usually, <laughs> usually someone is willing to pick it up, though. Yeah, you know that's so. really nice. Now, when they call down your list, you guys answer the phone right away and say, "Hey, you know, thanks for double checking, but I, you know, I'm not interested right now." Because in here in Allegan, I don't know if we've talked about it before, but it, everybody lets it go to voicemail. Nobody. I mean, I had to call down for overtime the other day, and it was at like three or four o'clock in the morning. I think it was three o'clock in the morning, and one of our partners answered, and I was like, "Oh!" And she's like, "Oh!" I didn't realize what was going on. I just picked up the phone <laughs> because if if everybody says no, then that per- that one person who picked up the phone, they're forced in. No questions asked. They have to come in and cover that shift. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I just was wondering if that worked the same I way on your end. We have a couple people that will answer the phone. I think the majority. We'll let it go to voicemail. Okay. Um, I think a lot of that is you want to hear what the hours are, mm-hmm. what you're looking at. Right. So you can call in and say, hey, I can pick up the 3 to 11 or I can pick up, you know, 11 to 7. That's going to work. You know, that's yeah. going to work for me if you can if you can fill the other half. It of also it. depends, I think, what's going on. Because if they call for an overnight or a night shift and it's, you know, 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm mm-hmm. not up yet. I'm right. still sleeping. So, do you have kids? No. Do you, Jen? Mm-hmm. Oh, see, yeah, you're like Ricardo. He's, you know, he has a schedule he has to be on, help out his wife and stuff. But yeah. like my husband and I don't have kids yeah. yet, so I'm. This is awesome. As much sleep as possible. Yeah, I text my husband. Do <laughs> let the dogs I, out I this morning. Right? <laughs> do you sleep? Do, do you I, get I do enough? because my son is 15. Oh, and oh my, my older son is 20. So. I have an eight-year-old oh. and a one, one and a half year old. Don't so. act like that's anybody's <laughs> fault but yourself. Yeah. No. I, I can't wait for Crystal to go through that. I'm gonna be interesting yeah. I'm like yay losing no. sleep i can't wait exactly <laughs> i'm gonna call jenny she's gonna come babysit well you know oh, yeah you, you have what did you say you have 10 years 10 years of daycare experience mm-hmm. before yeah. and i kind of chuckled to myself because i thought yeah you know working with toddlers that's a lot like taking phone calls from drunk people you know toddlers are like little drunk people <laughs> they stumble they slur their words they don't make sense sometimes they make a mess <laughs> with their food i had plenty of college roommates that were just like that so yeah you have a lot of experience with that i bet your patience on the phone is a little bit different than some of some other people's yeah how do you do it how do you do it how do you keep your patience with callers because that's one thing that i've always been interested in as well because i'll get people that call in and they're swearing at me Mm -hmm. and yelling at me and i'm biting my lip because i know i can't say anything back and i try to be as nice as i can Mm -hmm. but how do you deal with it? Well, I just have to say, Crystal is always nice. So is she? <laughs> she is. I heard she throws stuff at oh, people. You know oh, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. But I'm you know what? I think Jen shield. lied I earlier too. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, um, I think really, I I think the more you do it, the the more control you have over yep. that, and mm-hmm. you just want to get the information, and right. you know what I mean. Get the information that you need, and and move on with the call, you know, get the help that they need and, and be done with it. I think that I try just to stay focused on what I can get from them and, you know, what I, 
what I can. If they're if they're calling me names, I try not to, you know, take it personally. You try so. not to call them names back. Right. <laughs> I cry a little bit afterwards. Right. <laughs> they called one one nine. So bad. <laughs> Is there a call that sticks out in your head where you remember, you know, I know we all try to be professional. I had mentioned it when we did our news story with WZZM. I said, people don't call 911 all the time. You know, you, you hear the story or you hear the statistic, whether it's accurate or not. 20% of the population utilizes 911 80% of the time or whatever. But um, is there is there a time you remember thinking, that person was just a jerk. Is there anything like that you've had a really big learning experience or has, has everything just kind of, you let it go in one ear and out the other? I think it more in the beginning, like I said, more in the, I, I yeah. would take things a little bit more personally okay. and take calls and, and just be like, like almost when I got off where I was like, what did, yeah. what did I say? That was, <laughs> you know, like, it was yeah. so take it very mean. personal. <laughs> 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 And so I and now I'm, you know, I got a little bit tougher skin uh-huh. sometimes. I find if people so. are saying stuff to me that that's mean or if it's inaccurate and I I know it's not right. I, if they say, well, you told me this when I hang up the phone with them, I, I play our callback log and just to make sure I listen to it. And I'm like, wait for it. Wait, for it. I knew I didn't say that. <laughs> right. I knew I didn't say that. Yeah. Just to be sure. Yeah. Crystal, what about you? Is there anything that you remember just being like, you are a mean person once you hung up the phone? Um, not specifically, I don't think, but again, like Jenny, just starting out, you, it's hard to take some of that, the words that they say and the things that they call you. I'm like, really, you're calling for help and, uh, yeah. and you're using that tone. And, um, at this point it, I just kind of let it go. Have you ever had anybody call back and apologize for being mean? I have actually had a couple, I spoke to a couple of the deputies that were on the road or officers mm-hmm. responding and said, you know, that the caller was really kind of rough with me Mm -hmm. you know i'm i was doing my best to to help and i've had a couple of them come back and say you know they apologized you know yeah that's good it's good and it's it's an educational thing for them too we Mm -hmm. have to ask these questions because you know our biggest thing is going to be that responder safety or whatnot and you know i don't care if you get offended if i ask if you've been drinking or using drugs or i'm gonna ask it i might Mm -hmm. ask it a couple of times because i don't believe you the first time sometimes i even explain that to them if if they're getting upset with me yeah why are you asking if i've been drinking what does it matter to you well I'm asking for my officer safety because mm-hmm. that's important to me. So I need you to answer my question. Yeah, because you told me you're walking around your front yard with a machete. So I just want to know if you're drunk on top of it. <laughs> right. But, mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things that we want to do here. We want uh, we want the people who are listening to this to understand that you know the, the stories that you just told, you know, the people calling in and yelling at us and everything, and then us wondering, okay, I'm just you know I was trying to help you. I don't know why you're so upset. Um, I'm hoping that people will learn to just be more patient. I mean. I actually have a friend, I won't say his name, but I have a friend who sent me uh, an email the other day and he had said that he was in an accident and he had called 911 and, you know, they were asking all these questions and that he got, he was being, you know, impatient himself. But he said that after listening to our, you know, first few episodes that we've had, that he now understands why we do what we do and why we're asking. And he thanked me for that and or us, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, and that's that's what I'm hoping we can do for everybody who's going to listen to this to really learn from from what we do the behind the scenes of everything. Um, just a couple of days ago, I took a phone call from a guy who's um, he had a, a relative who was suicidal. Well, I'm asking him questions, and he didn't know the address. Um, he didn't know uh, another relative who lived just across the street. I mean, there's a lot of things that he should have known that he didn't know. And he was getting frustrated with me, and he started yelling at me, saying, "You're really pissing me off." And <laughs> I said, "Sir, the feelings mutual." <laughs> I, I, I said, "Sir, I'm not trying to make you. I'm not trying to get you upset." I said, "I'm asking you these questions because you don't know where this person is at, and I have to try to run any type of search that I can so that I can find him and help him." And he says, "Well, why didn't you say that in the first place?" And I said, "Well, it's kind of obvious that I'm asking you all these questions for a reason, but..." But it's you know, a I just had to, yeah, I just had to explain it. Wasn't it obvious to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So hopefully, you know, people will be able to, to when they learn get upset from all like this. That, though, I try and remember that they're calling up because they're having a good day, because they're having a bad. You're day. absolutely right. Yeah, right. I just Very try and keep chill. that in the back of my mind because I'm there to help them and. You know, what they say in the heat of the moment may not matter later on. So. And they're so flustered and whatnot yeah. that you have to ask them that same yeah. question like eight times over. Um. So if you have, uh, 
we've all taken you know domestic calls and everything. How do you guys? What kind of techniques do you guys use to when someone's screaming and screaming and screaming that you can't get through to them? You know, just saying hello, hello, can you hear me? Is there anything that you guys do specific? Because I know for myself, um, if they can't hear what I'm saying, I will bring my voice down to almost a whisper. So that, you know, kind of trick them to make them think that there's nobody there no more. And then they'll say, hello, is there anybody there? And then I can jump right in. Um, Do you guys do something similar or, I mean, do they teach you guys anything, you know, during your training at all or anything that you can think of really? Not specifically from training, Mm -hmm. um, but I I tend to do the same thing. Um, I have a quiet voice anyway okay Um, (laughs) i've been told that too many times i have too (laughs) i don't believe you Uh, (laughs) jen you're the liar up here (laughs) knock it off Um, oh wait that d1 thing i forgot (laughs) keep going crystal so i just i i tend to have a quiet voice anyway so Mm -hmm. that kind of helps in those sort of calls that sort of situation um works to my advantage in a lot of ways because again they're saying hello is anyone there (laughs) hello i'll be like yeah, so I'm going to ask you some questions so I can get you some help. Right. And then I just kind of jump into it. Nice. What about you, Jen? Yeah. Um, I think it's the same thing, just kind of being quiet, um, just kind of listening for what you can hear in the background. Right, and yeah. Maybe in the meantime, just trying to find out everything yeah, you what can a great about thing. what's, you know, what's coming in, where the phone's coming from, where the GPS is hitting, everything you can to get somebody. Or trying to get names if they're yelling back mm-hmm. and forth at mm-hmm. each other. Yeah, that's a yep. really good point. If you can't get anything else from them, just right. start documenting what you can hear. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's always the best thing. Throw it all in the narrative. You know, usually when I do uh, QAs and it's uh, immediately the phone call starts out with screaming and screaming and uh, you know, nobody's getting through, when I'm doing the quality assurance, all I hear is the typing, the typing, the typing, the typing. Mm-hmm. And I can you know, there's like three pages full <laughs> because they no one ever says anything. It's like they just set the phone down. But, right. you know, that's... For, you know, people who don't know exactly, uh, that's what we do. You know, we have to think of any little thing that we can do to, you know, get that information in there for the officers that are going um, out there. Um, for 911 calls, how would you explain a 911 call? Like for you, like I explained uh, mine was like, you know, slamming the gas down and letting go. To you, what is it like to take a, a 911 call, Jen? Gosh, I don't know how to we answer that We didn't discuss that, that one on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> I told people before that it's kind of like, you know, when you have your trainer there with you, I found it's a trial by fire type of thing where they're going to shove you off that ledge, but you know there's a net to catch you. And I feel like that still, you know, I'm comfortable when I take 911 calls, but I still feel like that with my partners. Sometimes I feel like I am free falling. I know I'm going to mm-hmm. stop sooner or later. I always have my partners to lean on, but it's that kind of feeling of just, that's how I picture it as. Do you just go into it real, like, I got this? Or do you ever feel like, whew, when you pick up those 911 calls? I think no matter what. I mean, I've only been doing this two and a half years. We have people that have been doing it for 12, 15, 20 years. There's always mm-hmm. going to be a call that you just don't know what's going on, don't mm-hmm. know how to deal with it, don't know what to enter right away, depending on what you hear on the other end of the phone. Isn't that interesting? You think, is this a civil? Is this something that people are just really heated or, you yeah. know, somebody about to get clobbered on the you other end. You almost get thrown off. Like, yeah. I agree. Yes. All, and then you're. I agree. Like, wait a second. Yeah. I'm off my game. And as comfortable as we are in answering the phone just to begin with on a day-to-day basis, there's always going to be, I think, you know, a call every now and then that you just don't know what to do with. Mm-hmm. No matter how long you've been dispatching. Exactly. Is there anything really funny that you guys have? That you, any really good calls lately? Anything that's happened out on the road? I don't know if there's anything particularly funny it's so hard to remember because you know that's the first thing people want to know is how is what kind of calls you take and the longer that i've been there like i walk out the door and i'm like and i'll come back the next night Mm -hmm. and somebody will say hey do you remember you know what happened you know that happened yesterday and i'm like huh (laughs) who what are you talking about look Um, over your shoulder are you talking to me like (laughs) i don't remember yesterday so it's you know do you just take less and less home with you the longer that you're there Mm -hmm. yeah um, and I think also what I've noticed the longer I've done it, I don't, I, my blood pressure used to go up a lot uh-huh. mm-hmm. for a lot of calls. Now it's just the serious ones where I can feel yeah. like everything. Right. You start to become the sweaty kid. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> I've definitely gone through that myself. Oh, yeah, me yeah. too. Where you start taking off, you know, exactly. taking off everything. Yeah. And, like, oh, this is hair. a good one. Just you taking off my jacket. <laughs> sideways ponytail. You got your headset on and you're trying to. <sighs> um, so, yeah, I don't know. Have you taken anything funny lately? 
it, while you're thinking about it, I'll tell you, we had a city officer in Wayland, newer guy, he's pretty young, and he, oh, yeah. he <laughs> he's just patrolling. I think, you know, everybody's vehicle was getting stuck. I don't know if his had gotten stuck that day, but I mean, it was just one of those things where it was snowing so hard and everybody was just taking it really slow, doing a lot of accident reports or whatnot. And he keyed up to our Ricardo and I's partner on Prime and he said, oh, no, he said it to me. That's yeah. right. Yeah, it was he, to you. He, yeah, said, it he said, he identified himself and called Central. And I said, go ahead. And he said, uh, I'll be out with an obscene snowman. And instead of using like a 10 code to, you know, repeat your traffic, I'm not clear. I just keyed up and I said, a what? I yeah. thought that's what he had said. <laughs> but I thought there's no way that's what that's what's going on. Yeah. He keyed back up and he said, yeah, I'll be out at the middle school with uh, an obscene snowman. And I kind of want to key up afterwards and say, you're going to need status checks. Yeah. <laughs> and then I get a message. He's pretty quiet. I get a message from him later on in the night. He sends an MCT message to my computer and he said, I had to crawl to the, this is verbatim. I had to crawl to the top of a 15 foot snow pile and knock its parts off. <laughs> <laughs> little stuff like that. That's, you know, and I've started documenting. I keep a little running list so that on the show here, when we're talking about stuff, we have other things that we can bring up but you're right though you go home sometimes and you forget that stuff and it, it'll come back to you three right. weeks later and you think oh mm -hmm. my goodness that's right right we probably should have told you guys to think of that stuff you know a couple of weeks ago so you could have started <laughs> yeah compiling our list yeah we got you guys didn't we <laughs> yeah watch out um is there anything that uh either one of you can think of that a message i guess that you would want to leave the public something to help them as well as us you know make the whole process of a 911 call easier i would just say you know we on the other end that's our job is to help that's what we're there for mm -hmm. i mean when we we're not there to um make any decision on who's at fault in an accident or in a domestic yep. situation or anything like that i mean that it doesn't have an effect we're just there to help and mm -hmm. you know everybody there likes what they do mm -hmm. and so i think that um that that's important. It's also, it, we're in a job where we're expected to really kind of be 100%, 100% of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just, you know, and if you're not 100%, there's somebody sitting next to you that's going to, that's going to make you be 100%. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's right. going to catch that and right. say, you know, we need to do it this way. Or I guess also for me, it's important for people to remember that I'm asking the questions for a reason. I'm not there. I can't see what's going on. Neither mm -hmm. can my officers because they're not there yet either. I need to get all the information I can so they have a mental picture of what they're walking into, whether it's a civil or a traffic complaint or domestic or suicidal, no matter what it is. Yep. They need all the information and all the resources that I can provide for them. So that's why I'm asking the questions that I am. Yeah. And we don't even know the backstory. You know, sometimes people right. will give you the information and you need to ask a little bit more and they say, well... Or vice versa, they start back in 1976. <laughs> well, the first time we went on a date, and you're like, mm, yeah, mm, mm, yeah. Mm, mm, like, no, you need to know what's going on today. Yeah, what happened so, just now? Yeah, uh, you have to have a very <laughs> powerful personality to be a 911 dispatcher. I can tell, Crystal, you seem like a little bit more of the quieter one. Mm -hmm. Jen, you've been picking on me the whole time, so I think you're a little <laughs> more outgoing. But it's interesting that I don't have any pens in my. Yeah. Oh, well, that's and, right. And Crystal's also on my side of the table, so I can hit her a lot quicker than I can hit Jen. <laughs> but it's it's interesting, though. You know, you have a quiet dispatcher. You have a really outgoing dispatcher. But you kind of have to be able to be in control even when you feel like everything else is spinning out of control. You know, everything else out there. So that's a great thing, though, to tell your callers is just I need to know for a reason. Mm -hmm. There's a reason behind everything I'm doing. And unfortunately, in an injury accident, I can't explain to you all the reasoning behind it, but I promise there is one. Right. <laughs> I'm um, surprised at how much we expect out of callers. Um, yeah, do you know what point. I mean? Like as far as where yeah. you're at, are you north or south of this intersection? Are you, you know, because if I were, <laughs> if, if, if I were driving and got into, you know, an accident, I mean, I remember right, right. calling in um, a slide off into the ditch and I, I called my own center and mm -hmm. I said, hey, I'm on the side of the road with a car. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Jen. And they were like, Have fun. Where, where are you? And I I turned around and, you know, thank goodness there were street signs. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. right at just south of this intersection. And so then they were like, okay, what are you doing there? And I was like, right. Car in the ditch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what oh, I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I slipped know. back. I'm one of my callers. Yeah. But it's amazing how 
much more aware of that we are now as dispatchers. When mm-hmm. everyone else isn't a dispatcher, how are they supposed to know what they're supposed to be looking for as they're driving down the road or, or yeah. True. You yeah. know, yeah. surroundings and that sort of thing? Last night, Ricardo and I were talking. I hung up with the phone and I said, I kind of lost my patience with that guy. And Ricardo said, why? And I said, well, I asked him where he was on the freeway and all he told me, he, he gave me a stretch. It was like four miles. Oh, I'm yeah. in between this mile marker and this mile marker. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to try to narrow it down a little bit. Where do you think you're at? And we narrow it down a little bit further. And I'm trying to clarify if he's on the ditch side or if he's on the shoulder side. Um, I'm sorry, if he's on the meat, now I'm, I'm leading <laughs> like into a, my like I'm, a sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'm leading into my story a little too fast <laughs> here. I'm trying to figure out if he's in the median or off on the shoulder there. There you go. And um, he's kind of getting frustrated with me, and it, but it was snowing so bad out there that mm-hmm. I knew if they came up on it, it was going to be hard for them to try to zip over the freeway if they came up on the wrong side of the highway there. So I asked him, and he said, again, I have this this in my on my notes verbatim. He said it's down in the ditch in the median. But I paused there because where that's at, I looked at Ricardo and I said, I paused because it's not real ditchy there. And he said, what? And I said, you know, right where I'm talking, it's not real ditchy. I said, it's just kind of like flat median that goes across the other lane. And so Ricardo was laughing about that. And I said, is it on the median side, sir? Or is it over off the shoulder down in the ditch? Uh, He kind of huffed back at me and he said, again, verbatim, it's in the median, off the side of the shoulder, down in the ditch. And I just said, (laughs) okay. So I put in the narrative. I was like, I'm unable to clarify which side of the freeway it's on. Combination of all three. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Well, then the funniest part about it was that every time I was asking him a question, he was using check for yes. (laughs) Check. (laughs) Check. So I said, does that sound about right to you, sir? Check. (laughs) <laughs> and you know sometimes people will tell you something and they kind of giggle and they say done for <laughs> they yeah. think it's so funny and you look you want to just I was like i gotta move on to the next exactly. call <laughs> uh, that's all you want to do on the phone you're a real comedian there but <laughs> so then i said he kept saying check for yes and my narrative was all goofed up my sentences didn't make a whole lot of sense because i kept it yeah. just kept throwing me off because here in in Allegan, I don't know if it's the same in Ottawa or not, we say check if we're giving something out on the radio and we, we give it incorrectly. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah like so check we, that. Yes, yeah, so we kept saying check, so I kept like waiting like, no, it is or it isn't. Yeah, you, question? you got a question? Yeah. <laughs> so I was waiting and, and then uh, one of our coworkers, Michelle, she was funny. I had asked a question later and she just yelled from the other side of the room, check! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a... That's gonna be a, a that one will stay. That that's a yeah. keeper. Yeah. We'll keep that one there in dispatch. Yeah, but location is really important, and and it's really good. If you can't tell us a street sign and you can't see any big things like a, a water tower or stuff like that, let us know what you can see around us. I've noticed coming in and out of work when I'm traveling down 131, uh, one of the main highways in our county here, I'm looking at billboards, and I'm knowing at what exit what billboards are up. You know, around the our Gun Lake Casino exit, there's actually a, a competing casino that has a billboard up just a little bit further south from oh, it. Oh yeah, there is. Yeah, so I <laughs> I'm noticing stuff like that now, and I you know I tell people, do you see the casino exit or do you see the billboard for such and such casino? And they'll say, I just it's right behind me, and I know that they're just past yeah. the 61 mile mark or stuff like that. So you know if you're if you're not a 911 dispatcher, you're just tuning in to hear us. I, whatever you can tell us, whatever you can see around you. Yeah, any landmarks, anything like yeah, that. Yeah, that's it. The more information, big, big help for and if us. I don't know what you're talking about, someone else in the room might. So I'll, yes. I'll bounce right. it off someone else in the room because who you know lives in that area or whatnot. Right, exactly. I'm not too familiar with the north end of the county, but the south mm-hmm. end of the county, no problem. So yeah. it just depends who's in the room with you too. Yep, very yeah, true. That definitely helps. Uh, I used to live in Holland, and I live in Zealand, so a lot of the stuff like South Washington and all that area there, you know, people will call up and they'll say, "I'm on so and so address, Matterman Drive." Okay, I'm in Allegan County. Well, yes. However, but. yeah, geogra- I say, geographically you are, but Holland City has been annexed into Ottawa County, and they're like, "No, I'm in Allegan. I'm in Allegan County." And we, I, you just can't. They fight. called me a liar once. Yeah, I got called a liar once, and I said, why "Do you want would me you to prove it? That? Do you want me to prove this?" Like, why would you say that to me? I'm so hurt. No, I didn't say that, but. um yeah, I was called a liar once because of the whole Matt Urban thing. I'm like, no, I'm yeah. serious. It is. It's in a different county. Just for people who aren't familiar, Allegan, you know, we have a pretty straight line border with 
um, Ottawa County, but Highland City, the furthest city south in Ottawa County, it it does dip into Allegan, what, four miles maybe? Some, it's a good like chunk. That. It's not just like one road comes into Allegan. It splits at 30 seconds. And people know that they're in Allegan County geographically, but yeah, like I said, it'd been an, it's been annexed mm-hmm. in, up into Ottawa County, and people get frustrated. But Yes, please be patient with both of our agencies, and don't call me a liar. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's hard for us because when we transfer up the call to Ottawa, we don't know who we're talking to. So then <laughs> right. we run into a snafu there, too. <laughs> Uh, they're gonna go. You guys are gonna go back to your uh, to your centers and be like, "Man, don't do that show." <laughs> we just got destroyed because we don't give their name our names. <laughs> oh. oh, that's funny. Well, um, thank you very much, both of you, Jen and Crystal, for uh, joining us for this uh, episode, episode number six. And this is gonna be our wrap up. We're actually coming up on one hour. Um, wow. Did it seem that long? It did not seem that no. long. No. Not after we didn't, started, as, no. It didn't seem as long as your trip down here. No. <laughs> <All> <laughs> that right. was interesting. I was kind of concerned because I saw, Jen, that you had posted on Facebook that you were en route. And I told Ricardo, I said, uh, I don't know who they think they are, but in Allegan County, we don't text while we drive. <laughs> well, Jen, I, was I said, Crystal, no better be driving. <laughs> was texting and also navigating me here. So that's why it took you six weeks to get here? (laughs) It's okay. I've only been awake for 47 hours right now. Yeah. Seriously. They're going to say, nobody else is going to do this show. (laughs) Did you guys have a good time? We did. Yeah, definitely. We we are really thankful that you guys came came down here. It's great to uh, put some faces with... Well, not even with your name, but... (laughs) (laughs) Faces with your voices, yeah. Yeah, some faces with Ottawa. (laughs) Uh, Well, um, for uh, anything, uh, you guys can always reach us by email. Uh, There's actually a couple of them that we have going right now. One of the main ones is the jcast at thejeverlog.com, but another one that you'll be getting uh, a lot of your uh, responses from is going to be from Whitney, and that one is wttpodcast at gmail.com. And you can always follow us at Jabberlug on Twitter, as well as at RM2Visions. The number two is a Roman numeral two. And all of these episodes uh, can be found at uh, the Jabberlug.com, which has been my tongue as I was trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> the Jabberlug.com is where you can find it 24 7. I might be bleeding now. But uh, one quick shout out um, because he helped us out, uh, spread out um, some information on the open call that we had. Daniel with uh, Nighttime Dispatch Radio. Thank you very, very much. You can check him. I believe he's out every day uh, or every night, actually. And if you guys are working the night shift or just up late and you want to listen to some good tunes, he is spinning them all night. Uh, you can also find him at uh, the nighttime dispatcherradio.com. So that'll be the wrap up. Thank you very much once again. We'll talk to you all soon. Thanks. You just listened to Within the Trenches on the JCast. If you have any questions or would like to be a guest on the show, send an email to thejcast at thejabalog.com.